We've talked about the story of John Munn being asked by a monk in the city, a monk who was dubious of John Munn's ability to learn and practice the Dharma out in the forest. The monk said, here I am living in this great city with lots of wise monks. Yet even then, I find myself coming up with problems in the Dharma. And I don't know who to go to. Nobody seems able to answer my questions. What about you, when you're out in the forest? Who do you go to, to listen to the Dharma? And John Munn said, I hear the Dharma 24-7, except for when I sleep. That's the part of the story we all know. The story goes on, though. John Munn says, there's not a moment when my mind is without problems. A defilement comes up into the mind, and I realize I have to depend on myself, my own powers of mindfulness, my own discernment, in order to work it through. And when that problem is resolved, then another one comes up, and I have to fight that one off. It's a constant battle. But it really brings home the issue that the self is its own mainstay. I don't think about going to anyone else to solve my problems. I have to solve them myself. It's an interesting take on the idea of what it means to be mindful as you go through the day. A lot of people say they don't have time to meditate. But remember, what does the word meditate mean? Meditate in Pali, bhavana means to develop. And you can develop good qualities anytime, in any place, in any posture, in the midst of any activities. It's simply a question of learning how to observe your mind and to see what your mind is telling itself. How do you talk to yourself? Or to put it another way, what are the different voices in the mind telling you to do this, to do that, that this is right, this is wrong? Be alert to those voices, but also bring the other qualities of mindfulness as well. In other words, remember what kind of thinking is in line with the Dharma and what kind of thinking is not. And then be ardent if you realize that a voice has come into the mind and it's showing that it has some power over your actions. You have to ask yourself, is this really in line with the Dharma? And if it's not, you've got to do something about it. You can't just watch it. You've got to figure out how to counter it, how to expose it for something really stupid. Because that's what it is. Our thinking that's imposed to the Dharma is basically very stupid. It may have its clever reasons, but it's going to be stupid in the sense that it's not wise. What you have to learn how to do is learn how not to be duped by its cleverness. And this is not just a practice for people who can't meditate many hours of the day, or can't do formal meditation. It's a necessary part of the practice for everybody. All too often, as we sit and meditate, we get so that we're very obedient, we're like little children in school. The teacher is in the room, we pay attention, we do our work. When the teacher leaves the room or we leave the schoolhouse, then we don't do any work anymore. One hour, two hours out of the 24. It's a big loss. It has all our practices. We should try to be mindful, alert, and ardent all through the day. Mindful and discerning all through the day. Any thought that comes up that's opposed to the Dharma, you've got to counter it. Remember, there are two ways. One is just simply looking at it clearly to see where that, it, that it's wrong, and it'll go away. Another is if it has roots in the mind. In other words, it has some power over your actions, over your way of viewing things. You have to actively question it, argue. Think of a John Munn arguing with his own mind, doing battle with his own mind. One of the reasons we do concentration practice is to give the mind some rest between the battles. But also, as the mind gets still, 
You use directed thought, you use evaluation, you use verbal fabrication to get the mind still. And ideally, you should get to a point where you can drop your verbal fabrication so that when you pick it up again, you see it clearly. Oh, this is how the mind talks to itself. Then you can see these voices more clearly. And one of the best ways of exposing these voices and help, making sure that they lose their power, if they are opposed to the Dhamma, is to find some way of laughing at them. We read the books like Awareness Itself, Skill Release, where Chan Fuang and Chan Li have these very quick retorts. Some pretty good zingers for when their students say something stupid. And it's the same in the old Zen koans. This student says something he thinks is perfectly fine, and the teacher points out immediately that there's something wrong. Well, how do those people get that way? It's by treating their own minds in that way, treating their own thoughts in that way. And a good way to get started with this kind of practice is to think of the various ways you tell yourself in the morning when the time comes to get up and you have the option of sleeping a little bit more, and the mind will give you all kinds of reasons for why you should sleep more. Take note of them. Write them down. And then look at them at another time of the day. And see how, when you're a little bit more awake, how you would argue with those voices. And then the next day, if that argument comes up again, remember what you were able to think of the day before. This is how you are mindful. In other words, you. Keep in mind a good retort, a good argument. And then you remember your other powers, you the ability to breathe in a way that's more wakeful. Images you would hold in mind. So you have a John Mun standing next to the bed. John Lee. Someone who you'd be embarrassed to have see your thoughts. In this way, you use all kinds of, verb of your fabrications, your bodily, verbal, mental, to deal with the defilements as they come. And this is how you recognize the defilement. It's opposed to the Dharma. It may be clever, but it's basically stupid. Because after all, it's making you suffer. If you saw things in the right way, the wise way, you wouldn't be suffering. Think of the Arahants. It's not that when they gain awakening that they have no more karma from the past. They still have past karma that they have to deal with. There's still negative things that are going to happen to them. But they've learned how to think about those things, see those things in a way that they don't suffer. So if you're thinking is making yourself suffer, tell yourself, okay, this is stupid. And I may not be able to see its stupidity quite yet, because it, after all, it is your normal way of thinking. But you can ask questions. Ask yourself, what if the opposite were true? Turn those thoughts inside out. This way you can make your practice 24-7. Be mindful 24-7, because you're not just mindful. You're mindful and discerning 24-7. When the practice becomes an all-day affair, that's when it begins to have an effect.